Doctor, can you talk about the, the history of, of uh, putting fluoride in the water system and, and the thought process that went into that where they thought ingesting this would mm -hmm. actually help mm -hmm. you know, oral health? Yeah. The first thing that happened was 1931. The, from about 1900 to 1931, uh, there were some dental researchers who were concerned about this mottling of the teeth that they were seeing in Texas, Colorado. It was called a Colorado brown, Texas stain, and so on. And in 1931, three different researchers found out that what was causing the staining of the teeth was fluoride. But meanwhile, some of the dentists thought that they saw less tooth decay. I mean, when you see these black teeth, you think, oh my God, their teeth are rotting out. But they didn't find a lot of tooth decay. And then so this notion arose, well, maybe there's a level of fluoride that won't cause too much dental fluorosis, acceptable levels, but at the same time reduce tooth decay. And in 1942, the famous uh, Trendley Dean of the U.S. Public mm -hmm. Health Service came forward and said at one part per million, we'd only get about 10% of dental fluorosis, but we would reduce tooth decay quite significantly. And then they embarked upon the trials in 1945. And they were meant to be 10-year trials. But before any of those trials had been completed in 1950, the U.S. Public Health Service endorsed fluoridation. And that was like a row of dominoes. Within a year or two, the American Dental Association, the American Public Health Association, American Medical Association, on all these professional bodies, bodies followed my leader. Now, the, the, the irony and tragedy of this is that in 1950 and 51, they didn't, none of those trials were completed, and they didn't have very many, if any, medical, genuine medical studies to see if there was any other harm being caused. So clearly, it wasn't science. There wasn't enough science on the table for the mighty US Public Health Service to say, go ahead. So if it wasn't science, it was politics. And that politics has continued to this day. The, the, the politics, you know, I wrote a book, book on this with two mm -hmm. other scientists. We were just absolutely appalled at the science that has never been done, is still not being done. Fundamental science. For example, you would expect, would you not, that we would, knowing that about 50% of the fluoride that you take in each day accumulates in your bones, you would think by now we would be looking at bone levels of fluoride to see how this is progressing, see if it's having any harm on the bones like arthritis or bone fractures. We've got practically no bone data. There is no systematic attempt to collect fluoride bone levels mm -hmm. in the United States. Secondly, we know that dental fluorosis, the severity of dental fluorosis is a very good biomarker of how much the kid has been exposed to fluoride before their permanent teeth have arisen. Mm. This is a, a godsend to epidemiologists. If you were interested to see if fluoride had an impact on the child's developing brain, on the IQ levels, on behavior, on concentration, on um, tension deficit syndrome, on bone fractures, melatonin levels, onset of puberty, all kinds of things in children which have been suggested might be related to fluoride. And here you've got the tool, the severity of dental fluorosis, and we've got millions of children in each category throughout the United States. It's a uh, epidemiological studies begging to be done, never been mm -hmm. done. And the attitude is, if you don't look, you don't find. And they're assuming that the, the absence of study is the same as the absence of harm, which of course is not the case. But meanwhile, whilst the United States and other fluoridated countries are being totally irresponsible, not doing the basic studies, other countries which have a different problem, not whether or not their policy is causing harm, but whether the natural levels of fluoride are causing harm and what levels would be safe, uh, we need to get it out, in India and China, parts of Africa, Mexico and so on, have high natural levels of fluoride. Millions of people have had their lives ruined by natural fluoride. Bone damage, so we have names for it, skeletal fluorosis. So we've, mm -hmm. in India and China, in villages, you have the children show dental fluorosis. But if you look at the adults in that same village, they have skeletal fluorosis. Their bones have been damaged. So the Chinese, the Indians, Mexicans are doing a lot of studies. But instead of trying to repeat their studies to see if at lower concentrations, we're seeing an effect. 
They just challenge the methodology. That's, that's a standard thing, denial and uh, nitpicking the methodology. Well, I say, look, if your methodology is so darn good, then go out and do the studies. You know, why haven't they done an IQ study in the United States? Mm. Here we have 33 studies, red flags being waved, not doing the studies, not doing them in, in Canada, not doing them in the United States, not doing them in England, not doing them in Australia, not doing them in, in New Zealand. It, it's, it's atrocious. Mm.